All right, so this is gonna be a new section that we're gonna show and teach a batching section. Now we're gonna do a batching station and we're gonna uh, basically do this from scratch. We're gonna do everything from the very beginning, meaning we're gonna add everything. We're gonna do all our RS link setup. We're gonna do all our program setup. We're gonna do all our, st uh, everything that we need to actually use real world devices and actually have this working. And we're gonna use this with Factory Talk SE. So we're gonna build out HMI graphics to work with this. So this will be the lead video starting this series out. And we're gonna go through this short and sweet. Every video will stay roughly around 10 to 15 minutes. And unless they go detailed and more detailed than we need, to, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into RS Links and we're gonna create a new driver. And the only reason we're gonna do this is we're gonna show you the factor of setting everything up from scratch. So we're gonna do Ethernet IP devices. Um, well, actually, let's come in here and let's do, uh, no, that's fine. Let's do IP devices. Let's come in here and we'll, we'll rename this and we're gonna name this batching station. So uh, the batching station, what we're, we're just giving this a name so that we can have a reference, some point of reference that we can turn to. Now we're gonna make this and we're gonna pick, in my case, I have multiple NIC cards. So I'm gonna pick the NIC card that I want to use, okay? Then I'm gonna come in here, pick that. Now, the reason I picked that is because that is a sustainable network that I can, I have segmented on a VM that I still am connected to the Wi-Fi of my actual computer on the host. So I still have internet access on my host as well. So I've actually configured my VM to be, uh, to work with that. And so, and that's done basically off of uh, preferences right here in, in virtual networks and stuff. So. Now we'll come in here and we'll, we're gonna find our, uh, basically everything we have connected. So this automatically finds it. So we're gonna actually see that. So we all, we have everything set from 192.168 um, and 1681. So then that is all of our IP addresses. So now we wanna come in here and find, this is our, our uh, ENBT card. So this is our ethernet card, it's a 1756 E B R E N B T. So this is a slightly older card, but it is uh, a firmware that is um, a higher version. So we are able to do more, uh, you know, things like uh, produce, consumed, and stuff like that with it. So we're able to do that. Again, this shows the setup we have currently. So uh, really a simple setup. Uh, we're using the small network switch, unmanaged, really good, solid configuration for training and showing you how to do things. So um, this is gonna show exactly what um, the rack that we have in here. Now, currently I was uh, doing some training, again, uh, showing different things on YouTube and other things as far as different trainings we, we just, we've just done in the past. And so currently they have the YouTube 30 day project loaded in there with my Cerakos card, uh, with the actual Cerakos rack and everything set up in there. So you can easily see that this is has our system in here. This also has the PowerFlex that we did our PowerFlex 5, uh, 525 training on as well. So this is a quick and easy way to understand the IO that we're going to be adding inside of the actual processor. Now, what we can do is we can easily come in here, create a new project in Studio 5000. What we're gonna do is we're gonna um, have our control. This is not gonna be an emulator. This is not gonna be a guard logic. This is going to come back in. It's not gonna be a compact logic either. We actually have a control logic, so we have an L73. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call this batching station. Uh, and then we'll call this batching station project. Now, this is just for training. No, this is not for this. This is we'll be simulating real world, but it's just just for training. So we're gonna basically connect that. This will be version 32. The rack slot is zero. So in this case, you can choose what if you wanted to move your processor. This is where you would, if say if your processor was in slot one, two, three, or four, five, six, seven, and whatever the uh, slot size is for your chassis. Um, again, this is your version size up here. So the versions you can put it in. These, this is your chassis size of your actual rack that you currently have. In my case, I have a 10 slot rack. Um, so actually I have a seven slot rack, so I do need to change that. 
I have a seven slot rack. So in my case, I'd have a seven slot rack that I currently have in a trainer. Um, and this again is what we're gonna be training off of. So um, this comes in and it actually has uh, the processor in slot zero. So we can move the processor if we want to, but in our case, we're gonna keep it in slot zero. So, um, and you can do security protection as far as you want to, but we're not gonna do any security protection. We're just gonna keep it the way we have it. You can do a, a lot of different things, uh, enable redundancy and stuff like that. This is going to be, again, simple as possible. So we're just creating the actual program now. So as the program is creating, and again, it is actually creating right now. Um, so we're gonna just merely talk about the setup we have so far. Now again, these videos will be starting out kind of slow for some people and they will be fluent for some people to get the fundamental learning that you need to learn from actually starting a program, from building a program to understanding what you need to do to get conductivity, to understand what you need to do to, to really kind of grasp everything, right? So it's, it's really important to learn that and to know these things. So feel free to you know move forward if you need to. Um, you know, or, or merely wait for the next video. But again, that's completely up to you. Um, I want to make sure that this is a solid foundation to get everybody to move forward and get the details of doing things properly. Now, when your program first comes in, you need to understand the, the name that we gave it up here is the controller name is the batching station project, okay? This is where the project is. Currently, we have nothing in our IO tree. The IO configuration, is where your your IO is going to be. If you have a real world IO, then that is where you're going to connect that. See right here, this is the setup we just chose from the actual selection that we just did, right? So our IO configuration is our 1756 back plane, which is a seven slot rack, and this is going to be in slot zero, okay? So that's actually going to be where our processor is, and we've named our processor batching station project. Okay, so it, by default, by default, it comes in with a main program. I'm going to change the main program from a continuous task to a periodic task. Now, I do this for a set reason because I like to control things at a controlled manner timing-wise, and I like to understand that. So I hit apply, and I'm gonna change this to periodic. That's gonna change it to a, the symbol over here on the left-hand side is going to turn from what it was to a clock now to indicate that it is a periodic task. What I like to do is actually come in here and put in 47 milliseconds so I understand and the person behind me and anybody troubleshooting behind me understands the periodic rate task, uh, the timing of this task that we're doing, okay? So then we're gonna come in here and change that. That's just basic timing, basic configuration. So that's just what we're gonna do. So instead of having this continuously scanning, it's gonna save processor time and do this in a methodical way, right? So we're saying, and I'm just picking uh, a random number 47 so that I don't have a rollover. If you can think about a rollover, um, when you come in here and you, you're online, you can click monitor and you'll see this. This will have your scan times, your max and last, and then it will also have your intervals between scans. So then if there's any problems on your scanning, you'll have task over rate or overlaps, right? So in your overlap, that means there's a problem. That means your, uh, your processor's not going to respond properly. It's not going to do the logic and, and divide the, or do, you know, as far as the, the logical outputs and the logical interpretation of what the machine is doing or what you have done in your logic, it's not gonna do that task properly because the simple fact of the, pro the it's not timing properly. So this is mainly the reason why I do periodic tasks. And if you do servo timing and servo processes, you'll learn that timing and um, doing different things as far as periodic tasks is really, really critical when it comes down to such things as like uh, registration or events um, event driven things and stuff of that nature and something that you can be really critical on so it nailed down. So I want to briefly describe why I'm doing certain things like this, right? So to kind of go through this, we have the assets by default. Um, th they come in with predefined stuff. 
these are the instructions that you see up top these are predefined things that you're going to it's just going to come in by default you don't ever have to mess with this at all um, we'll come back and talk about user, user defined strings um, add-ons and stuff like that again we have other trainings for that we, we did add-on training and stuff of that nature but when it comes down to it you can easily see uh, this is your where you would put in motion for like if you did servos but in our case we're going to keep it really simple <clears throat> we're going to keep it really efficient and we're going to keep it really uh, down to the point where you're going to understand each and every point of what we're doing so what I would like to do at this point being that we're at the 10 minute mark is I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video and we'll continue on the very next video where we're gonna add all of our components that we did from this, what we, what we currently have in our actual program or we, we have in our processor rack, right? So we have this in a rack, we're gonna go ahead and add this and we're gonna add this in inside of our IO tree so we can actually make the tie-in and actually go online and download this to this and see if everything works and that way you get a full understanding of how things are set up how th why things are set up that way and then move forward from there you get a base foundation move forward from there keep building and growing from each and every video we're going to be doing in this series so we'll see you guys on the next one and uh, we look forward to it